a hard parable. <coughs> Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused. But later he said to himself, I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, though that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Today, right now, I think it would be a safe assumption to say that people are praying. The migrant, the child, the elderly, the deserted spouse, the teenage loner, the new arrival in a strange city, the shy person alone at home, the political prisoner without recourse to justice, the hospital patient who is alone, the dying soul with no one to sit with them, the grief stricken with no one to console them. People who are praying, people who are asking God to do something big. And Jesus says, God will answer these prayers. But is it just with the little things that God answers? Or in ways that we maybe don't understand? Um, Jesus said that. Not one sparrow falls to the ground without God knowing it. Now, it, that's not a promise that sparrows won't fall, but they cannot fall without God being intimately concerned. In the same way, there is no promise that marriages will not break, that cancer will not come around, that accidents will not happen. Yet somehow by Experiencing God's love in these tough and tragic experiences, things are worked into some type of vindication. Will God not vindicate His call people who cry to Him day and night? Will He delay over them? Will He vindicate them speedily? And Jesus is our example of one who prayed and at the end things did not turn out how he expected. I think that reminds us that we need to keep praying. And what happens may not be what we expect, but it may be best. And sometimes it seems like whatever happens is beyond the control of any sensible thing because horrible things happen. And God agrees with us and is there comfort with presence rather than comfort with fixing. This is, this is a tough parable to deal with. But I like to think about it another way. There was a, a expression I used to hear uh, I have a very long time that instead of certain people they'd wear a warp on you. Anybody heard that? I'm from the country. I, I am a hillbilly, bred and born, and uh, we have a lot of expressions. And I'm often saying things to uh, to Ellie that I have to explain. I said the other day, well, you know, I, if I went to that, I'd feel like a fifth wheel. Have you heard that expression? Okay. Well, Ellie hadn't heard that expression. That's not in the English-Spanish uh, book. So I explained what that meant. You know. But uh, yeah, 
talking about you know people who are so persistent uh, in what they want or the way they talk or come around or whatever is said that they just kind of wear a reward on you. And I think of this woman who uh, felt like that she didn't get justice and so she kept bothering the judge who didn't have any regard for anybody and finally he relented because she just wore him out. So what if, what if we are not like the woman who is pleading her case, who is praying for justice to happen? What if we are the judge and God is the woman? What if we are those people who sometimes have no regard for God or others? And God keeps coming around quietly, pleading, prodding, promoting, revoking. And we just keep resisting. But the promise of God is that God is not going to stop. The God who knows when the sparrow falls is not going to stop. But coming around when things are difficult. God lifts us up and raises us to a new possibility as we are open to God's presence. Is it in the little things that we see God? hardly give somebody water for a lifetime, but you can give them a bottle of water when they're thirsty. It, it's hard to it's, want to help somebody out. It's hard to give them a million dollars, but you know, you might be able to buy them a meal or help them with a bill. It's just those little things that have me convinced that God is present Anybody got anything to say?
has been coming to this service for a couple of months now, bringing a number of her five children. <laughs> and her husband, uh, uh, Jeff, who is, uh, works in security at Centenary, often has weird hours and has not been able to make it. But, uh, Jennifer and family would like to bring their membership That's seven folks. <laughs> we can celebrate that. And I know you've met most of these people and, and will continue to be involved. And uh, we're, we're so delighted to have you come. And I want you to, uh, I want you to do something right now. I want you to come down here. And I want you to be one of our communion servants. Okay? And I would like you to hold this cup. And to be recognized as you representing your family, your kids, uh, most of them are upstairs. Uh, Noah's here. And, um, 